stop it. Today is April 24th, 2012, and we are interviewing Wayne Firth at the Illinois State Library in Springfield, Illinois. Wayne is 69 years old, having been born on April 16th, 1943. Uh, Wayne, could you state for the recording the war and branch of service you served in? I was in the U.S. Marine Corps, and I was, wasn't in war. I was in Vietnam era. I was, I was off the coast. I never did land okay. on Vietnam. I was there at the start of it. Okay. And uh, what was your rank, your highest rank while you were in service? I was corporal. And, uh, and can you tell us where you served uh, in addition to Vietnam, basic training? Well, I started at San Diego, San Diego, basic training. I went through infantry training in Camp Pendleton. Camp, I'm sorry, Camp what? Pendleton. And is that in North Carolina? That's in California. California, okay. Then I went over Far East Asia for 14 months, floating around. And I came back in the last two years or two and a half years, I was in a security guard in Las Vegas, outside of Las Vegas. It was a nuclear storage place. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, during your time, what was your job or assignment? I was in infantry, and most of the time I was in anti tanks. Sometimes I was in M60 machine guns. Okay. And uh, so you said you were pre Vietnam. Were there casualties or anything during pre during your time there? Since it was well, there was always casualties, yeah. civilian casualties or whatever. People get hurt, but there was no actual casualties from war. Okay. Could you tell us uh, about a couple of your more memorable experiences during your time? Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't really have any. No, no memorable experience. Okay. Um, were you awarded any medals or citations? I had the uh, Good Conduct, National Defense, I got the Cold War ribbon, and I got the Expert Rifle, Sharp Pistol, Sharpshooter Pistol. Okay. How do you get a Sharpshooter Pistol Award? Well, you have to qualify with the pistol every year. Oh, okay. So based on your, your scores from yeah. your, Okay. Same with the rifle, it's every year you had to qualify. And how did you stay in touch with uh, family back home or while you were in Vietnam? Wrote. Wrote. Okay. Yeah, but there was no cell phones back then. Right, right. <laughs> um, what was the food like during your time over there? Uh, most of the time it was pretty lousy. Yeah. We had a lot of field, we'd be having a lot of sea rations, stuff like that. We got back to the States and Nevada it was pretty good. During your time over there, did you have anything special that you carried with you for good good luck charm or anything like that? Or No. No, nothing like I that. I don't think so. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think so. How did you entertain yourself? Over there, did you guys have any do anything for entertainment or? The only thing we had was, of course, we go on Liberty. You know, that's basically basically it. And then we pulled into Hong Kong once. I think someplace else once for rest R and R. But. Mm -hmm. And so, where were you stationed at then in Vietnam? Where were you? I was off the coast of Vietnam. So I was on an LPH five, okay. which is a helicopter carrier. I was assigned to helicopters. Okay, how big of a ship is that? It's a World War II carrier converted for okay. helicopters. Okay. It's a carrier, World War II, and then it converted just for helicopters. Okay. So it's pretty good size. We couldn't pull in a port in the Philippines. We had to go to other port because it was at Civic Bay. We had to go to Quebec Point because we couldn't get carriers in that. How many other people were on the on the carrier with you? Uh, Estimate. Uh, let's see. I don't. Probably a couple hundred. I don't know. I think there's only a company on the carrier.
and I don't know if this pertains to when you did they have entertainers that would come through for you guys or anything yeah, like but that. We never get I never did get to see. You any. never got to see any they, name they, like carrier. USO shows or all these mm -hmm. stars come over and they ask anybody want to see them and then they draw names. You know? Oh, and never you always never, never got name got drawn. <laughs> And during your time there, what did you do when you were on leave? Mm, I don't know. Did you, <laughs> did, did you, get, you get to leave the carrier? Would you go to Hong Kong then? Or is, well, we saw the carrier oh, when we went to Hong Kong. Okay. And, um, so, so you went to, other than uh, California, uh, Vietnam, did you travel anywhere else while you were in the service? I was just in the Far East when we went to Okinawa, Philippines, okay. Japan, Guam. Taiwan. Okay, so all over. Okay. It was on a floating battalion. Okay, we were so, ready right. battalion. Okay. We was ready to go in Vietnam. If the if they was getting another battalion ready, we were supposed to be first ones in there, but they got the other ready and they sent us back to the States. So oh. Our time was up, but we was ready to go in there. Okay. Uh, do you recall any uh, particularly humorous or unusual events that uh, from your time? Well, no, not really. I <laughs> seen a Navy officer fell in the water once, but yeah. that was kind of funny. Off the carrier? He was coming up the gangplank and he missed it and fell in the water. Wow. <laughs> Is it difficult to retrieve somebody from? Well, no. But no. We don't want to retrieve him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did, were there ever pranks or anything that you guys would pull on each other? Well, yes. I. I used to hang around with the Australian Marines over Hong Kong, especially. And this one guy had a like a beret, but it's real white. And I asked him, "He's like, how'd you get it so white?" He said, "Yank, I got tired of washing it, so I painted." He had seven coats of paint, so I traded. We traded covers, hats, and they wasn't going to be back aboard ship and sell us out of uniform. Oh, really? <laughs> that was pretty neat. <laughs> but they let you on. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Uh, what did you think of your officers and fellow soldiers? Well, most of the Marine officers are pretty good. There's only one that was, I thought was kind of an idiot, but <laughs> I mean, he never did nothing right, but it seemed like the rest of them were pretty well. I had yeah. no problem with any of them, and yeah. uh, as far as Marines go, we always stick together. Right. We still stick together. Do you keep in contact with, no. with some of the people? No. no. Did you keep a diary during your time? No. Do you recall the day your service ended? Uh, February something, 1966. Can't remember the exact date. And, and where were you when your service ended? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. That's where you said that. And once you got out of the service, what did you do in the days and weeks afterwards? I tried to find a job, which was impossible. Yeah. I had two weeks left before I had to, had to, I had to go back in service. So two weeks left before I had to go back through basic training. I was about ready to go, and somebody gave me and offered me a job because they just wouldn't hire. Me. Did uh, where did you go back to work at once you were done? Well, did you go to work? first job I had was RE Express, and they went bankrupt. Then I I don't know someplace else, farm supply, and I was Chalmers. One year I had five jobs. Oh. First first year. Trying to find a job. And then I know you said that you ended up at the Department of Revenue. Was that quite a bit afterwards? Yeah, it was that you 1972. Okay. So there there. Was, I had worked so for Penny for four years. Six years in between your time. Of, okay. And then are you, I know you, you're in the, the DAV. Are there any other veterans organizations that you're a member of? I'm a member of BMW, Post 755, Marine Corps League. Mm -hmm. and did your military experience influence your thinking about war or military in general? Well, it always, I think, I don't think anybody had ever been there will can say it didn't influence them somehow. If I had to do it again, I'd probably join Marine Corps again. Which, so. yeah. And uh, do you attend any reunions or anything like that? Uh, we used to have a reunion from Las Vegas. It's in Marantz, Missouri every year, but they haven't had that for a couple of years. I think maybe the people that were, most of them are older, some of them probably passed away that had the reunion, so I haven't been there for a couple of years now. Okay. 
uh, how would you say your service and experiences have affected your life? Well, I think everybody should go through it once because it's really a good experience. I mean, it teaches you to be on your own and you don't, you don't have to depend on anybody else to do something. You can figure it out yourself and do it. That's mainly what they did for me. You know, they taught me to think for myself. They're, they're trained. They could take anybody and lead a company if they had to. If all your officers got shot or killed, you could always just step right in. So they're well trained as far as I'm concerned. Okay. And that's that's basically it, Wayne. Those are all the questions I had. So is there anything else you'd like to add or no? no? Well, the only thing I was gonna say that if you run into like I I know these guys are go for or later, you know, Marines. And we're just, just like a band of brothers. Even today, even though I was in 40 years ago, and they was in four years ago, they're still just... Is, is something that's, you think that's more unique to that branch oh, of do. service? That, I do. Because yeah. the rest of them, I talked to people in the Army and Navy, they want to know how come we have to celebrate our birthday every year. You know, I said, well, because we can. You guys can do it, but you don't do it, you know? Because <laughs> they were pretty tight. I mean, right. even all former Marines, I mean, you got a, I got a decal on the back of my car. And people go by, you never see, you know, off the wave, you know. Because it's pretty tight together. Right. Okay, do you have anything else to no. add? Or, and they said, okay, all right, Wayne, well, well, thanks for your time. All we right. Appreciate it.